they began trying to keep me from, from speaking. And I nicely went ahead and gave them the microphone back. And then we had to ha have some of the local authorities explain to them that indeed Ralph Nader's group had invited me in to speak and that indeed uh, I was supposed to then go and introduce him. The military industrial complex runs the red light cameras, the cameras in the schools, the private prisons. That's what it's all about. They are setting up a Nazi Germany type system here domestically. And you know what? I want to thank the folks that put this together. Lori Tice and others, they're the ones that brought uh, Ralph Mayer in. And the local folks are great too, but it's 5 o'clock they're only supposed to be up here. But here they are because, well, they love talking to crowds. God bless you. I'm coming up later to expose the New World Order. Stay with us. Yeah! Just amazing activity. The fissures we see even in the so-called uh, peace movement. And their abject fear of me, because I'm pro-gun, pro-national sovereignty, uh, and against the tyranny of the Democratic Party. Bill Clinton did a lot to destroy our liberties and freedoms, because he's a tool of the elite. Bill Clinton helped protect bin Laden when Sudan and Afghanistan wanted to arrest him. Uh, he was just carrying out the policy of the CIA as an active puppet for the globalists. But they couldn't seem to figure that out. They can't understand that, that if we're going to get our country back, so-called right-wingers and so-called left-wingers and libertarians are going to have to come together and, and, and really get outside the box and see the big picture. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to see if I get up here and they magically appear again. Seriously, if we're going to defeat this global tyranny, the left and right have to wake up to the fact that left and right is a fraud. The only difference between George W. Bush and John Forbes Carey well, their cousins, their members of Stone and Bones, their voting record is almost identical. Think about that. Their voting record is almost identical. They both voted for the war. They're all for the same issue. That's the key here. And I have to tell you that after having a chance to talk to Ralph Nader's staff, after being able to interview Mr. Nader, uh, I do think that there is a well-founded suspicion by a lot of Democrats that Ralph Nader is acting, whether unconsciously or consciously, as a agent to throw the election to George W. Bush. The Democrats say anybody but Bush, whereas in reality, it really doesn't matter. Either way, they've got this election fixed. As we said, this is the American dictatorship, where the elite gets their man, their puppet, their figurehead in the position of power. We were partially responsible, our government was partially responsible for Saddam Hussein as we were supporting any so-called anti-communist dictator in the world. Along with the British, we helped entrench him as a dictator of Iraq in 1979. We equipped him with arms. We gave him foreign assistance and credits. We had our corporations apply and receive export permits from the Department of Commerce in the 1980s under the Reagan and Bush 1 administration, providing this brutal dictator with the raw materials for chemical and biological warfare. In 1983, Donald Rumsfeld, Special Envoy, visited Saddam Hussein when these materials were being used and didn't say anything. He was our dictator after all, wasn't he? He was our dictator. The U.S. government has overthrown over 50 dictators since World War II without invading them. They're experts at overthrowing not our dictators, the other side's dictators. It's interesting just to speculate. Why in the world, knowing that he's a tottering dictator with disloyal troops ready to run at a moment's notice and surrounded by enemies, why in the world didn't the U.S. government under George W. Bush merely overthrow him instead of invade Iraq? There's a three-letter word for that, folks. Oil! Oil. What did we see in the last election between Albert Gore and George W. Bush in 2000? We saw two different rival factions inside the New World Order fighting for control, fighting for the management position of CEO of the New World Order, of Slavery Incorporated. It's clear that Al Gore did win the popular vote. It's not clear if that popular vote was actually his or if Democratic operatives 
uh, had stuffed ballot boxes and manipulated votes at the local level to the point of him winning by a narrow margin. But what is clear is that George W. Bush and different members of the constabulary in Florida and other states did steal the election, did block recounts, did disregard numbers that showed that Al Gore had indeed won the election. And then when that was in question, the Supreme Court, seven of the nine members appointed by Republicans, then returned the favor and appointed George Walker Bush as the President of the United States. We're talking about a dictatorship of the mind where the people are scared into absolute submission. Did you ever imagine that you would see the federal government up on television saying, well, the terrorists may want to disrupt our democratic process, so we're going to have to disrupt the democratic process. We may need to cancel or suspend the election if there's a threat or if there is a terrorist attack. But I thought the terrorists want to disrupt our elections, so why would you now try to disrupt the elections? How obvious, how transparent, how see-through is that? There was a case in Tennessee where the tabulation software added illegally a quarter of a vote to the favored candidate for every one vote that the unfavored candidate received. Now that was flat out wrong, but because this particular unfavored candidate had Judge Joe Brown on his side, they were able to sue and find out exactly what happened. So we understand that these manipulations are going to take place. ESNS, election system software. Republican Senator Chuck Hagel, who is he? He's got ownership ties to a holding company into the to ESNS. Well, he's a 20-year friend of the Bush family. He almost became our vice president instead of Dick Cheney. And he won his seat in the Senate twice by these big landslides in Nebraska in a state that had not elected a Republican senator in over 24 years. But you know what? The votes were counted, 80% of his votes were counted by ESNS voting machines. Maybe it's a little coincidence, I don't know. Don't know. It's very important for everyone out there to spend time looking at the election process in your county and your city. While Americans are being fed a steady diet of Michael Jackson and Lacey Peterson and lots of football, our elections are being stolen by the owners and controllers of electronic voting machine companies by rigged software and no paper audit trails. And time is running out for us to do something about it. I spoke to the Libertarian Distinguished Speaker Series here in Austin, Texas, and I have to tell you I was delighted when I told the crowd of several hundred people that if anybody here disagrees with me, uh, please ask a question, please state why. And no one said that they disagreed with me. This shows that we're winning the intellectual battle, that a mass awakening, a renaissance is taking place. And that's the best news I can give you. You know when a tornado is coming, or an earthquake, and they've done studies of this at major universities, mice, dogs, cats, get restless, start running around, get upset, sometimes hours, some cases even days before. They have that sixth sense. They, they have that instinct. They have that, that survival mechanism uh, deep inside them. And we all have that too as the most advanced creature on this planet. But it's pushed to the side by modern culture. We're supposed to ignore it. So the point I'm trying to make is, deep down, people know that something is wrong. Deep down, people are ready to move and stand up against the New World Order. And it was exciting to be able to hear the speaker before I spoke, who detailed uh, just some of the key smoking guns and bullet points and red flags concerning industrialized election fraud. In 2002, elections were held in Iraq. And yes, we got 100% of the votes. Saddam Hussein, of course. No big surprise there. But nothing like that could ever happen in our country, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what if I were to tell you today that virtually any hacker with a laptop could hack into the electronic voting machines that are being used in most of the states across our country that are going to be used by 50 million Americans in November while they're voting for president, adding votes, changing votes, and changing the final tally without being detected. Uh, the work that you heard earlier 
I'm being spoken about with the 